Hi guys, um, so this is a video for Math 2400 and we're going to be talking about the Legendre symbol of 2 over P today and we, kind of our goal is to get a formula for it okay. like you know, a formula in terms of P okay um, let's just recall remind ourselves of the notation we have this symbol called the Legendre symbol and it's just um, like where you're gonna say like P is an odd prime and the Legendre symbol A over P is gonna be plus one if A is a quadratic residue mod P it's gonna be zero if A is divisible by P and it's gonna be negative one if A is not a quadratic residue mod P and rem remember if A is a quadratic residue that just means it's a square mod p. So there's some b such that a is b squared mod p, and also we have the um, convention that you know a quadratic residue is not divisible by p. Okay. So that splits up um, the units mod p into half quadratic residues and half non-quadratic residues. And QR, that's for quadratic residues, and NR, is that's for not quadratic residues. Okay. Then we have a few formulas which I should remind you of. Right. Here, um, P is going to be an odd prime. We have the formula for the Legendre symbol. A, the Legendre symbol of A over P is just A to the P minus 1 over 2 mod P. Okay. Um, of course, this is kind of like, depending on what P is, this may be not that useful, but it's we have it, okay? And then that gives us a formula for, um, like the Legendre symbol of negative one. It says the Legendre symbol of negative one mod P is negative one to the P minus one over two. And immediately that tells you that um, negative one is a quadratic residue for those primes which are congruent to one more mod four, and it's not a quadratic residue for those primes congruent to three mod four. Okay, and what we would like is a similar, um, a similar kind of classification for two instead of negative one. Okay. And how do we do that? Well, we're gonna use this thing uh, called Gauss's lemma. So first we start with our set S, and this is the integers from one up to P minus one over two. And then we have, we just have like a little proposition. That just tells us that every element, every unit mod P can be written as either one or negative one times an element of S, okay? So let A be a congruence class mod P, and there exists unique epsilon, either one or negative one, and, and unique S in S such that A is epsilon times S. Okay. Or if instead you have an integer not divisible by P, you would say like A is congruent to epsilon S mod P. Okay, so this is inside of the units mod P. Okay, and just like a, to give you a quick idea, okay, proof, right, um, first just divide A by P, so write A equals QP, plus r. Now if r is less than or equal to, like if r is an element of s, we're done. Okay, and here we're taking that, um, we're assuming a is in up, so p does not divide a, so in particular r is non-zero. So in this situation, we're using long division, we have r is in the range from 1 up to p minus 1. Okay, if r is less than or equal to p minus 1 over 2, just take s equals r. Now, if r is greater than p minus 1 over 2, 
well, let me rewrite that inequality a little bit more carefully. P minus one over two is less than R is less than or equal to P minus one. Okay, so what about, um, what about P minus R? Well, that's gonna be a negative number. Um, okay, oh sorry, no, that's, that's gonna be a number we want to see that p minus r is going to be a number between um, 1 and p minus 1 over 2. Okay, so how do we see that? Well, we can just do it step by step, like multiply this inequality by negative 1, and you have negative p plus 1 less than or equal to negative r less than, and we multiply this by negative 1, we get um, negative p plus 1 over 2. Now add p we get one less than or equal to p minus r and add p to this and what do you get? Well you get um, less than p plus one over two okay but a number that's less than p plus one over two is less than like it's an integer right so this is an integer so a number less than it is like at most p plus one over two minus one Okay, so what we can say is that one is less than or equal to p minus r, which is less than or equal to p minus one over two. Okay, and now, but then a is just qp plus r, which is we can replace with qp um, plus negative one times p minus r plus p. In other words, q plus one times p plus negative one times p minus r. And so mod p, a is negative one times p minus r, and negative one times a number in s. With p minus r in s. Okay, so we'll take epsilon to be negative one and p minus r to be the element of s. Okay, and the only thing left to do would be uniqueness um, so that would mean like now suppose you know we have epsilon times s congruent to epsilon prime s prime mod p okay And it's clear that if epsilon equals epsilon prime, then it means that S is congruent is equal to S prime. So and so remember S and S prime are both in the range from one up to P minus one over two. And for them to be congruent mod p, it means their difference has to be divisible by p. And the only things whose difference in this range with divis difference divisible by p are like if the two are the same. So in this case, s must equal s prime. Okay. Now if um, one is one, if one is negative one and the other is one, then we have. So if epsilon is not equal to epsilon prime, we must have then s plus s prime is congruent to zero mod p and now s plus s prime that is an element that is at least two and at most p minus one and for this to be congruent to zero mod p this is impossible okay so that means um that it that gives us the uniqueness of this decomposition. Okay. And now I want to 
we want to see that if we take s and multiply everything by uh, an integer, um, let's say b, maybe, then it's we still the the same property still holds. Okay, so now let's write another proposition. So that completes the proof of our kind of uniqueness, right? And now let's take s prime. Oh yeah, first let's fi fix b such that the GCD of b and p is one. In other words, p does not divide b, and let s prime this be the set b to b all the way up to p minus one over two times b. So take every element of s and multiply it by b. And our claim is that this satisfies the same property as s does. So let's write that. Okay. So let a be an, a unit mod p, then there exists epsilon and s prime, or let's say, yeah, epsilon in either one or negative one. I, I forgot the unique. There exists unique epsilon and unique s. Okay, and let's let's prove this. I guess it might be a little bit tedious, but that's okay. Right? Okay, so um, so how do we prove this? Um, we must solve. So we must solve bx congruent to epsilon, or I should say we should solve um, epsilon bx congruent to a mod p, where we have two variables at our disposable. We have epsilon, which can be in one or negative one, and we can have x, which must be in s. Because the elements of s prime are just b times an element of s, and we and a is is given, and we have to solve for x and solve for epsilon. Okay, but um, remember b is not divisible by p, so there is uh, inverse to b. So um, let b inverse. Um, it be be such that b times b inverse is congruent to one mod p. <coughs> Excuse me. And multiply this equation by b inverse, so you get epsilon b inverse b x congruent to b inverse a mod p. And b inverse b is just one, so you solve epsilon x congruent to b inverse a mod p. Okay. Now b inverse a, that's a unit mod p. And we know that uh, given a unit mod p, there exists unique epsilon and unique, unique x. Or um, I guess I should have said s in s, but oh well, I've used x already. So um, by the previous proposition, there exists unique epsilon either one or negative one and unique x in s such that b inverse a is epsilon x mod p well the uniqueness stays and then that implies that we can write a as epsilon times bx for unique bx in s prime and unique epsilon. And that completes our the proof of our next proposition. Okay. 
So now um, we've shown that units can be written uniquely as either plus or minus one times an element of s prime, and same thing but for s. Okay, so that brings us to Gauss's lemma. Okay, so um, let's let's make a little definition. Okay. 